Weekly, euthanize the news. You're welcome to another edition of Youth Weekly on Youth TV Africa. Here we discuss issues that made headlines in the language and perspective of young people. I am Success Ekwenyong. And I am Helda Pullens. Welcome. Here are some of the key issues that hit the headlines during the week. General Electric begins $1 billion investment initiative in Nigeria. 2015, Orisha Jack for urges politicians not to overheat nation's policy. NGO asks Fashola to apologize for deporting Anambra indigents. Nigerian debt rises to 7.93 trillion naira. FG pays 118 billion naira severance package to PHCN staff. I will run if APC approves worry. 80 million underage Nigerian children engaged in child labor. WIAC withholds 258,370 results. In sports, Mourinho ready for a real matchup. And on the foreign scene, former U.S. President George W. Bush has had operation. Well, those were the issues that hit the headlines during the week. Join us in a moment as we engage in discussions on some of these key issues in a moment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Weekly, euthanize the news. We are part of the social. We bring you youth perspective on issues. Youths have a voice. We have a story to tell. Youth Weekly, euthanize the news. You're welcome back to the program. This is Youth Weekly on UTV Africa, and this is the part where we take on some of the heated issues in the headlines. Well, success, we might as well begin by celebrating with our Muslim brothers out there as uh, the Ramadan periods culminate in what they call Idil Fitur. So happy Idil Fitur to every one of you, our viewers out there. Yes, and also to my very good neighbors, you know, my neighbor who, whom I've troubled a little bit about the meat and he told me to calm down. And uh, this is not the time. For I don't the think meat. this is the time for the meeting. Yeah, the meeting is coming. So anyway, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. And some very interesting <coughs> issues in the headlines. Mm -hmm. Some good, some bad, but that's the reality of life, right? Mm -hmm. uh, General Electric is investing one billion dollars. That's that's huge. You know, they are beginning from Calabar, and that's very interesting. Yeah. Yes, because uh, I read it, and it's promising that it will provide about 2,300 jobs. You know what I love about this is that they're coming to Tinapa. Yes. I was, I was there last year um, at a time that it wasn't a festive period, and I realized that it was, it was like Tinapa was only active when there was festivity okay. in Cross River State. Okay. All right, but now what G is coming up with is going to make that place a little bit busy, and um, than what it used to be. Not only busy, but it's also going to be very productive. Yes, yes. yes. I, I also learned they are setting up a training institute, you know, to build employee capacity and wow. capability, wow. Wow. which is a very big plus, if you ask me. Great. Yes. And, and for a, a company like General Electric, we can be sure that a lot will come into that place. Most definitely. Yeah. Most uh, definitely. What caught my fancy was the the, the, the rising debt in our country. Now it's to the tune of 7.93 trillion naira. Um, wow. It's amazing that during the bus and just came up, we were able to clear up some of most of this debt yes. of our country you know, totally wiped out. Interestingly, it is under the same Minister of Finance. Finance. You know, so, uh, though she was not minister at that time, but yeah. she was actively involved so and very debt. instrumental yeah. in clearing the debt. So, but I'm thinking that if the country is willing to accrue such a huge amount of debt, mm. uh, there's such a thing as good debt and there's such a thing as bad debt. Yeah. So it depends on which side of the debt this particular one we're talking about actually falls under. And we should be very clear on this. If it is not into building, if a, a huge chunk of it is not into building capacity, then yes. we are in trouble. Yes, actually, that is actually yes. a very serious concern. Yes. Well, but I believe we have a very intelligent, intelligent and yeah. up and doing minister, and she exactly knows what she is doing. Yes. And that's our hope, actually. Meanwhile, there's the case of underage child labor. 18 million underage children are engaged in child labor. Success. What is happening to the power of the Child Rights Act? You know, let's start from the value of a child. When we as Nigerians, whether you're talking of government or family or community, when you look at a child, what do you see in a child? 
Remember some time ago, the UN told us that 10.5 million Nigerian kids are out of school. Yes. We're still trying to grapple with that statistics because that is trouble. You know, when you walk by the street and you see kids walking, kids selling and all that, you may, you, you some, I think Nigerians were becoming sedated to the fact that this is not a good omen for a country. You know, gone are the times when actually parents go out of their way to labor to ensure that their children do not suffer like they do. Like they do. You know, when you tell a child instead of going to school, it's mm. hawking okay. on the streets all day long. You know, we had an experience one day and a child almost got run over because he was hawking. You know, and it was at the time when other colleagues of his or his peers were supposed to be in school, uh, are supposed to be in school at that time. So, you know, it brings the question, right. what is being back, done back to, to our your, children? Back to the child right act yes. Now, it's amazing that as good as this act is, only 15 states in this country have ratified it. Yeah, now, that is actually bulk, a decimal number. Yeah, so a bulk of the North are yet to, you know, come to terms with the, 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 the these laws, all right? And th this law is so brilliant, brilliantly constituted. It shows how the child should be cared for, how the child should not be exposed to certain things that should hurt the child. It, it gives the Nigerian child a platform of importance and value. And you're saying until this act is ratified by every state, uh, the, the legal instrument can actually come into place in ensuring the implementation that's of correct. the Child Rights Act. Uh, and that is something we are really appealing to every state. You know, if you're watching this program, it is highly important that the Child Rights Act be ratified because interestingly, it addresses very key issues relating to the welfare of the children that we have. You know, one of the actual, one of the uh, Act yes. was saying that the Nigerian child shall not be used as forced or exploitative labor, including their use as domestic help within or outside their home. Let me read another one for you. It says buying, selling, hi hiring, and um, dealing in Nigerian children for purposes of begging, hawking, prostitution, or for unlawful immoral purposes are made punishable by long term. Long of imprisonment. Time. You know, then it means that parents need to actually be very careful about how they engage their children in these activities. Obviously, this is against the law and it actually abuses the right of the child. Most importantly is when we keep doing this, we, we gradually destroy the future we are believing to have. Of course, this tempers with the psychology and the mindset of the child growing up. He becomes a, a, a tool for violence. You know, it creates a lot of apprehension in the mind of the child and affects his relationship with his peers. Let me help the adults think a little bit better. Yeah. All right. When you grow older, who will take care of you? Would it be abused kids? Would it be kids that have gone through all manner of molestations in their life, suppressed structure of living? You know, I think when they get to think about that, then some of these issues, you know. Well, that's a food for thought for the elders out there. Uh, you can join the discussion. There's a saying that the test of the morality of a society is what it does for its child. So what are we, what is the morality? What are we saying by how we are teaching our children? You can post your comments on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Africa, and tell us what you feel. Is the Child Rights Act being implemented in your state? And how do you feel they should be actually carried along? Do you feel that it is a necessary part of the child development of the welfare of our children in Nigeria? So we'll be right back, don't go away. We'll be engaging a guest in the studio shortly, a young person as well, as we talk on some of the issues that made the headlines in the week. Don't go away.
Vacation Bible School. This is taking place at the Church of Christ in Nigeria, Kokin, Garki, and we are doing this in the premises of the church. And Vacation Bible School is a program that is worldwide, and this is a program that brings young people together for one week of intensive interaction, very energetic. This year we are looking at the theme Casting out fear, trusting God. Casting out fear, trusting God. How do you deal with fear? Fear of so many things in our lives as young people by trusting God. And we are looking at it using example of a theme park. You are going to a park, to a garden, to a, an amusement park. You meet a lot of different rides and games. And they come with different experiences. Most young people are going through the ups and downs of life. You go down in difficult situations, you come up excited, and life is a roller coaster. And we're using that experience to learn the truth about how to face different situations. My name is Iyo Watoli, and we are at VBS 2013, Koking Gariki. And in this year's VBS, I've learned to trust God for whatever I need. And then, whatever fear I face, He's always there to answer me, and His word is always there for me to read and depend on. And any trouble I'm in, I have to remember that God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of His power, love, and sound judgment. My name is Victor Tohomdet. Um, we are at VBS um, 2013. Um, we have learned about Paul and how he trusted God to overcome his fears. Um, Kukuhan is about, like, they help build ideas in, into children. Everyone has an idea, but they help us to out to know how to use our ideas and it's we have been running this kind of country so there were these elections that went that took place for presidency and senate and all and then later they had um an frs um office and all those other just in running a nation my name is rose plan i am the vacation bible school director for cooking Derby this year and um Vacation Bible School basically is an ad hoc ministry of our church's Sunday school. And what we do is to work with children every year during the long vacation to ensure that our children do not lose sight of the principles that we hold dearly as Christians. Um, our children are indeed the future of our nation. We cannot, we cannot have a future as a nation without our children. So really, what we, what we are interested in is passing on the values that we hold here as a people down to our children in order to ensure that we, don't, we not only have a future a generation that is going to take over from us, but we're going to have people who would safeguard these principles that have helped us to be able to live as a people. Now, for us as Christians, we believe that God has created us for a purpose, and that purpose is to give Him all the glory. So we want our children to grow up knowing that they can exist in this world. The Bible tells us that we're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And the only way we can do that is by living right and shining right wherever we are. That our children, wherever they go to, wherever there's darkness, they can be the change that we require. That they don't have to carry the Bible around, but they can carry the Bible in their hearts and live out the words of the Bible in a way that when people see them, they will see a difference. And that is why we're interested in passing down these values to our children by teaching them during a time like this. And you know, for us, we don't have only the little children, but we have a class that caters for youth as well. People who are between the ages of 19 and 25 up to 30. And in those classes, we teach them principles that will help them to live day to day as children of God in a, in a world that needs answers. And for them to go back to the right place to find answers. And that right place is the Bible. And these children just amazing. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I mean, we have so much, so much. You know, it's interesting when you look at a child and you can imagine 
the, the great potentials in this child. You can imagine that one of these child could just fix our political system. One of these child could just be the person to fix exactly. our engineering, you know, sector. You know, all manner of stuff. No, the, these children are just fun to watch with. I know it brings to my attention the fact that you know there needs to be some regulation around the number of children you're actually allowed to produce. You should be able to just bring around children you can actually cater for. You see someone having nine, ten children, mm. and with a poor quality of life. You know, that is where all this abuse actually stems from. You know, I have an experience. I yes. visited the principal of the secondary school recently, and um, this principal opened or pulled out one of his drawer and brought out weapons. Now, he told me that these were weapons retrieved from students oh. this year. Wow. You know, and children I like, with weapons. I, I, yes, I, I sank in that in that in that seat where I was sitting on, and he was like, "This most of these kids, from what they discovered, were from broken homes, were from homes of parents or guardians who weren't their parents." Now you see, okay. that is where all this abuse actually stems from. There needs to be something like child welfare services, like there is in developed nations like mm. the United States, mm. where if you are not properly taking care of your child and you are found out you know, that the government can have the right to intervene vein in the upkeep and the well-being of your child. Exactly. Yes, we need something like that in this nation. Exactly. Yes. Um, we want to say thank you for joining us. This is where we'll be wrapping up this session. I would like if you have any comments or any reactions to some of the things that we've said today or the headlines that we've been dealing with today. We'd like you to read for to our Facebook page, drop your comment, follow us at our Twitter handle, at UTV Africa, drop your comments and all that. I'll be so happy and glad that you did. Join us next week. 